Oscilloscopes and I go way back. This was my first one. Real nightmare material with a low resolution display and 15 minutes of battery life on its best days. Well, we both have improved a lot over the years. Today we are stepping in front of the camera one more time to present to you the absolute pinnacle of oscilloscope technology. Ah, oh, no, come on. This is another Banggood product, so the purchase link is in the video description, should anyone feel the urge to click it after watching this video. Given its multimeterish nature, we've got to give it a hard time for including a transistor gain tester. Oh yeah, thank you very much. But I think there's also real value in this product. The enclosure feels reasonably sturdy. And the kickstand is held in place by a magnet, which will definitely cause mysterious component abductions. The probes feel okay, but the banana plugs are made from folded sheet metal, so I'm not hesitating to cut one off. To my untrained eyes, the cables seem sufficiently isolated, but given their diameter, I wouldn't use them for the 20 amp range. Before measuring anything, I want to take a look inside to see if I need a fire extinguisher or a blast shield. Before auto-ranging multimeters came along, the voltage divider at Autobot was a very common design. Fuses in this size cost 5 to 10 bucks, which is a big deal when your entire product costs only 50. Usually they are filled with sand, which is supposed to melt to prevent arcing within the fuse. This one wasn't, and will never be. On the mainboard we are seeing a lot of TI components, mostly multiplexers, Schmidt triggers and op amps. This one is a 16k bit EEPROM and I have no idea what it is doing in here. It doesn't really make a difference because the big microcontroller right next to it already has 128k bytes at his disposal. Under this blob I expect a standard multimeter chipset, readings of which are most likely just collected by the big microcontroller and rearranged for the matrix display. On the other side we can see the 20 ampere shunt resistor and some exposed traces that should have but haven't been tinned. On top of that, the silk screen suggests that this board was made with 10 amps in mind. Oh boy. On the voltage divider board we can see that the rotary switch contacts are gold plated, which is nice. But I don't like the via holes directly on the tracks. That's just begging for problems. Ok, let's get to the preliminary highlight of this video, the isolation clearance between input high and common. Keep in mind that this thing claims to be rated for 1000 volts, and then look at this. Input high goes into a standard 0.1 inch pin header into the daughter board. I've already taken a sharpie to better follow that trace around and to see how close we are getting to input common. But I didn't have to do a lot of searching to find that point. Good grief, why bother with all the isolation slots if you're doing that on the other side of the board? But I promised real value, didn't I? Well, we are getting closer. The display looks good and is readable from almost all angles. The background illumination is turned off automatically after 30 seconds, and that is not negotiable. That usually coincides with the time where you don't have an extra hand to repress the button. The frequency measurement works only above a certain voltage, but is accurate enough then. After figuring out that the capacitance measurement uses the two center terminals, it too is very accurate in all available ranges. The low current ranges can be checked with the SMU. They are absolutely perfect. For the high current ranges I need something a little bigger. I've also tinned those exposed traces, otherwise I wouldn't feel confident enough to do this. Just kidding. This is a very old 10 ohm resistance standard from the GDR. I'm checking it with a 4 wire measurement. And no surprise, the reading on the ET201 is pretty good. 
We don't have to go through them all, do we? How about the Mega Ohms instead? It is struggling a bit with its 20 Mega Ohm range, but 10 Mega Ohms are measured perfectly fine again. Now, arguably the most important function, voltages. Oh, it beeps at you when you're entering the danger zone. Look who's talking. Well, the SMU has a very reliable current limiting, so I think I can go all the way. Well, it survives and it shows a reasonable value too, but I wouldn't depend my life on it, that's for sure. I would trust that AC volts are also measured precisely, but it's definitely not a true RMS meter. The continuity tester could be faster, but it seems sufficient for the manual flying probe technique. The diode tester is the same function. Weird, but kind of works. I just wish they had included a thermocouple amplifier instead of the transistor tester and the remote control tester. So unnecessary. Now I've been criticizing this thing for almost 7 minutes and I think it's time to say what they have done right. It is one of the most affordable tools out there that lets you look at waveforms. I'm hesitant as to call it an oscilloscope because you have no control over triggering and offset signals. It moves everything to the center automatically and triggers at the zero crossing. It automatically scales the y-axis and you can manually adjust the time base. It certainly can't replace a standalone desktop oscilloscope. But a standalone desktop oscilloscope couldn't do this. If you trust the construction you can do mains measurements with it. By choosing the oscilloscope display in the current mode you can directly see how your consumers like to consume their power. This hot air blower for example does zero volt switching. Whereas this thyristor dimmer, oh wait a minute. Whereas this thyristor dimmer switches wherever it wants. I think that's a very useful tool to have. And the manufacturer could very easily circumvent my biggest complaint. 